Chatty Mondays, Chatty Mondays. This is Chatty Mondays, where I talk to you about my knitting on a Monday evening because it's basically the only time that I have to make videos. Um, welcome, thank you for coming back if you are a subscriber or like frequent viewer of this video uh cast and welcome if you are a new viewer i don't know why people say that i think like if i'm watching something i really don't mind if people welcome you or not i'll just cut that out later anyway i had a lot of fo's in the past couple of weeks i didn't record a video um in quite a while because i think Last time I had a Chatty Mondays video, it was before my birthday, which was August 1st, and it's the 23rd today, so my birthday's been, um, and I actually have a ton of like birthday stuff that I want to show you guys, um, but I'll put that in the end of the video because I know lots of people don't want to like watch, yeah, sort of haul type videos. It's not really a haul and it's honestly not that much but yeah I just want people to be able to um, skip through it if they feel like it I'm wearing my no hair no problems sweatshirt sweatshirt is the right word for that um, I have these for sale I'll put a link in the thing you know how this works um, I'm working on a sock from some very very old uh, self strapping yarn that has been in my stash since 2018 and I don't really know how long ago that is because since the pandemic everything feels like a hundred years ago but yeah I've had this this yarn forever but I'll get to that later as well I'll just start with my finished objects one of the things I finished um, that I don't have on hand are the market bags that I made for my son's teachers. He started school again today. It was back to school day. And so I had made, he has two teachers. And so I made two market bags out of uh, Schepius cotton yarn. I think the brand or the, the one that they have is Calista and it's quite a thick cotton yarn so it's nice and sturdy market bags but since they were a gift i don't have them anymore but i'll pop it pop in a, a photo um one is blue with a very thin strip of white because i ran out of the blue and i just needed something to do the cast off and i thought i could order some of the blue but I didn't really want to, you know, I didn't really much like that colour blue in the end. So I thought I'll not, just not order any more of it. I'll just, you know, finish it up in this bag and then do the cast off in a cream white. And uh, then I, I'm not stuck with a colour that I don't really, really, really like. Um, and the other one was cream white. And then I did the handles in orange. And I quite like that one, although my son, he's six, and I asked him which one was his favourite, and he preferred the blue one, so. Oh well, it's uh, it was just a present, just like a thing. Um, a thing, a fun thing to give, so uh, that was that. And then the other thing that I finished recently was a sock snake. So I've been knitting a ton of sock snakes, this is the one that I finished. Um, I call these the avocado socks, but this is actually Schepius oh, Invicta Optuers in colorway number six. And um, yeah, I finished this. It's about 55 centimeters, I think. It's a bit longer than the one I did last time. I did this one last time. This is going to be a long, like, big pair of socks I think and then this one's even longer so these will probably be um gifts for men for Christmas so either my stepdad or maybe um one of my sister's husband boyfriends 
uh, we'll be getting socks. Um, I'll be cutting them soon, putting the toes in. So what you do is, it's so easy, but you have to be a little bit brave. You put the um, needles, you put two needles in, and you just pick up stitches, put, if you have the Vs of a, uh, a knit stitch, you pick up the right legs for one side, and then the other side, and then you kind of skip a row, and then above that, do it again. And then the row in the middle, you cut it open, and you have two separate socks, and then use the needles that you picked up the stitches with to um, knit some toes. And you can use, what I will probably be using is some contrasting yarn. I think this goes together quite well, but it also goes to quite well with this. Oh, actually, this green might be too gray. Okay, it's good to know. I might need to get some different contrasting yarn. I think it works well with it, so. Anyway, um, and then you have socks with toes which means that you can either kind of measure out how long you want the foot to be, kind of detract how much you knit for a heel, and then do the same thing. Put in the needles, uh, cut it open, so it, or knit in a heel. And really what I usually do is just knit five rounds and then knit as I would knit a toe. I do the same thing for the heel um, but yeah if anybody wants me to do a video on that just let me know in the comments um, there are a few videos on that so if nobody's interested I will not make a video about that because it will probably take quite a bit of time but if people are super interested and want me to explain how I do it which is usually the most lazy way of doing things possible um yeah just let me know and i'll do do that so that's two sock snakes and um so yesterday i was like oh i need to find some yarn so i can knit another sock snake and i found this super super lovely ball of yarn that i bought in 2018 um on etsy from tiny human knits and it was the, um, what's it called again? It was from the Just Right Sock Kit and it came with a mini. So it was a ball, ball of ball, it was a ball of self striping yarn and a mini and it came with its own project bag and it's Goldilocks themed, which is all why I guess the bag or the set was called the Just Right Sock Kit. Just Right Sock Kit. Yes, I think I got that right. Um, and so I've been knitting on that and it is so super cute. Don't look at my hideous nails. I should have re, it's like something I should have done today before recordings, redo my fingernails, but never mind. Um, super cute sock. So this is also going to be a sock snake, something like this. Now what I do, I love these because you can just pop them like anywhere. I just have this lying on my desk. So I'm just working all day. When I have a video conference or a video call or something like that, and it's a little bit boring, I just knit because people cannot see when you hold your hands like this, they can't see what you're doing. And so it doesn't distract them. And for me, I'm actually more engaged because that part of me that would otherwise be fidgeting or doodling or, you know, just get distracted and click open some tabs on the internet and just do something completely different that part of me is now distracted by knitting a sock but really it doesn't take that much effort and brain space to knit a sock so i can you know be perfectly engaged in the meeting and be very attentive and participate in a way that is 
useful for everybody, I think. But at the same time, I'm knitting Christmas presents. So I think that's like a really good thing to do. I feel like it's something that should be normalized, knitting in meetings. I'm kind of worried about going back to the office because it'll cut into my knitting time. <laughs> that sounds terrible and I mean it. I mean it. I just mean it. Video calls are the worst and if I can knit and get through them in a way that is better for everybody, I will. So. I just put my knitting all over my notes, which is not helpful. Okay, so yeah, I started these. These will be <laughs> done soon because this is super fun to knit on. Um, the other thing that I am knitting on is this sock. And I only just started the cuff on another one and these are the Devereux socks and it is a pattern that I will be publishing soon uh, hopefully somewhere in September beginning of September um, but yeah this yarn is uh, Mondim uh, from Retrosario Rosa Pomar in Portugal and I think it's colorway 102, but I could be mistaken. It reminds me of a cup of tea for some reason, because it looks like that, you know, when you've put milk in tea, that's what it looks like to me. Uh, but yeah, it's in this cute little thing that I'll talk about in a bit as well. It's been lying around in my living room. <laughs> As it, to inspire me to finish this project. Um, something else that I've been knitting on um, that is also a pattern that I'm working on is something I'm not really ready to show a lot of, but it's this color, it's really fluffy. I'm knitting it out of these two yarns held together. Um, and they are by Camaros, and I've discussed these previously, so I won't go super into detail about it. Um, this is, this is a short pattern that I hope to publish somewhere in October, but yeah, we'll see how I get to it. I'm not super far yet, still have loads to do. I think that's all my knits for... It, it seems like I did not knit, ma knit bleh, it seems like I didn't knit that much, but I... For some reason, I think it's because I knitted socks instead of garments, and garments, when you knit them, it always feels like this big massive thing that you finished, and with a sock snake, it's just like... I knitted this. It just feels less of an accomplishment than like a sweater. But this is going to be a present, so it's going to be great. Um, yeah. If you are admiring my pink couch, by the way, this is Ikea. It's light pink. And it's a terrible idea if you have children because they smush stuff, food stuff, all over it all of the time. Um, although, I have to be honest, I have made stains on this thing as well. The good thing with Ikea is that usually the covers come off and you can just wash them. But I have been thinking about getting replacement cover for this couch and getting a different color, just like something gray or beige that doesn't show up stains as much as pastel pink does. But I do love this couch. It's very, very me. Anyway. I had my birthday a couple of weeks ago, 1st of August, I turned 31, 31, no, I turned 41, <laughs> Jesus, lies, 
And so the week before that, my son was on holiday with his dad. They went camping to Tessel, which is one of the islands in the north of the Netherlands, which makes it sound very exotic. It's not. Um, <laughs> on that island, they have a lot of sheep. And that sounds like a fun knitter's holiday, but it's not really because the sheep on Tessel are not really, like their fleece is not super suitable for knitting. They do have it and then usually you get like a blend of something like a much softer uh, yarn to make it sort of nice and knittable. Um, there is, I think, a company that sells yarn that is like 100% tessel sheep. It's really, really scratchy. It's... I know people sometimes say that they really, really like your rustic yarns and they don't feel the scratch. And I would challenge them to knit with 100% Tessel sheep wool because it is, it's like Brillo pad levels scratchy. Anyway, um, but Sweet Thing came back from his holiday with his dad with a birthday present for me and it was some yarn and it is tessel sheep but it is a blend of some sort because it's it's quite soft and kind of curly and lovely so my plan for this this for this my plan for this skein of yarn is to make a pair of mittens i have some um lovely dark brown almost black uh, yarn that is from the UK and I can't remember what type of sheep that was anyway I thought it would be nice to make some Norwegian mittens with some Dutch and English wool so that's my plan so you know, that will be coming up um, and then my sisters got me a bag with my initials on it and then the idea was that in the bag there would be a ton of presents but my other sister got sick and so we met up later she gave me like the things that were supposed to be in the bag which were like a ton of these like little basket things that i can leave around the house which are perfect for storing knitting projects in and then also uh, this bag which is actually, it's this is H&M Home. It's not supposed to be a thing for knitting, but I feel like this is like the perfect knitting thing for like on your couch or in your living room. Um, I'm currently storing all of my leftover sock yarn. It's all, um, not all of it. I think like 90% of this is l like leftover commercial sock yarn now this i see immediately here this is a pair of christmas socks coming up um it's some west yorkshire spinner west i don't know what's happening i can't speak english anymore today it's ridiculous west yorkshire spinners uh one of their christmas yarns i noticed that they came out with a new christmas sock yarn um, somebody I was following on Instagram and I just can't remember who it was posted about it. I think it was, uh, Kralaline. I'm not sure. Anyway, so West Chalk Spinners, I don't know if they do it every year, but often they bring out a, um, a Christmas sock yarn and people buy it because we are crazy people, but... It's usually really fun. Um, I don't think I'll be buying it this year, not because I don't think it looks nice, it's just that I have too much yarn and I kind of want to reduce that. So those were the birthday presents from other people. And then there were also a bunch of uh, birthday presents that I got myself. Uh, number one is this project bag that is kind of like a sock bag. And it has all the golden girls on it. And I think it's so cute and fun. And this makes me smile every time I use it. 
because I have been using this mostly non-stop for socks. Um, it's super fun. I got this from uh, the Happy Kiwi on Etsy and she put in some st stitch markers as well and some chocolate and some tea so that was brilliant. Um, yeah, really, really happy with this bag. I love the Golden Girls. I used to watch that show when it was on Dutch television, like all the time, all the time. It was so much fun. Um, I wish one of the streaming services here would show it. It's not on, I have checked. You know what I'm watching at the moment though? I'm watching a lot of X-Files, which is on um, Disney Plus. So the, I think it's like the either like the European Disney Plus or my, you know, not exactly sure how it works, but there's something that they call Star, which is like this sort of subsection within Disney, Disney's streaming service. And it has so much great stuff. There's like all these old movies. Um, there's like all the alien movies, they have all the X-Files, the X-Files movies, they had Firefly, they have like a ton of new things that I'm totally not interested in, but Disney Plus is like slowly becoming my favourite streaming service at the moment. I actually cancelled my Amazon Prime because I was not using it anymore. I was debating about cancelling my Netflix subscription. But then my son started crying when I was trying to calmly discuss it with him, with him because he wanted to watch Pokemon. And apparently that's only available on Netflix. So we are now <laughs> subscribers of Netflix purely because it has Pokemon on it. So, oh well, um, it's fine. You know what? It's fine. Um, something else that I got, oh yeah, I got this for myself. This is a project bag. <laughs> this is a project bag from Denmark. Um, this is from a store in Denmark called Tante Groen, I think. In Dutch, I would pronounce it Tante Groen, but <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's not how Danish people speak. It's really nice. It's like some sort of um, quilted fabric and it has pockets in and it's really, really big and it's quite sturdy. So if you fold over the, I mean, it will stay up, I think like this, but if you want to have something that's really sturdy, you can just fold down the edges and this will stand up upright really nicely um yeah it's a really big bag and i really really like this fabric for some reason it's probably because it's pink um so yeah i got this for myself and then um when i bought this at the same time i saw that they were selling these uh stitch wires i think they call them um, Maska Snura or wires or whatever. But the idea is, I also, these are the thicker ones. Um, I also got some thin ones. Oh, there's a dog outside barking. I hope you can't hear that. Anyway, they are, these are the thicker ones. The, I also got a packet of thin ones. Um, and I've been having trouble getting them back into the package. I got uh, I pulled them out because my sister was here and I gave her some of them because I don't need, you know, 12 of them, obviously. But they're all in different colours. Here we go. <laughs> so I'm not going to do it because it's not going to fit. Um, because this is, I need a thin one for this, but this is just, you know, for demonstration purposes. But this is great when you're knitting a sweater and you want to try it on and you just put it on the tip of your needle, you pull it through all your stitches, uh, your live stitches, and then this is holding your stitches, then you can, ooh, ooh, 
then you can um, try on your sweater and then if you think oh this is the right size you can just pull back your needles again and then take this off and then you can continue knitting and then there's no faffing about with like adding an extra pair of long needles and picking up all the stitches you can just pull this through the stitches so it's a thing that I that exists I didn't know this existed I saw it on TikTok not on TikTok but the Instagram version of TikTok because I don't have TikTok because I'm an old lady now um, but I saw it on the Instagram version of TikTok that has a name I don't remember what it's called anyway and I was like what is this and so I posted it on my stories with the question of Instagram knitting community online people what is this and then somebody said oh it's a really big thing in Scandinavia they called stitch wires musker snurder whatever I can't so sorry i don't mean disrespect um but yeah people have them i've been raving about them so yeah i thought oh i'll just buy some actually i thought one of my friends from is is one of my friends who lives in sweden but is dutch but lives in sweden is coming over not this week but next week because i watch so i watch formula one which is racing racing cars um and the uh, in the first weekend of September, the race is held in Zandvoort, which is super close to where I live, um, the Dutch Grand Prix. So um, he's coming over because he's a big fan of uh, 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 Formula One. And I thought, oh, I'll just ask him to buy some in Sweden and bring them over. But then I was ordering this because it was my birthday, almost my, my birthday. And I thought, I'll just order them, or order, <laughs> Jesus. I can talk normally, but it's not working today. Um, but I thought I'll just order them from Denmark. And then, then there's that. I did, they were not expensive. I don't remember what I paid, but it wasn't much. And I got like 12 of them and I don't need 12. So from every pack, I ripped like two or three and gave them to my sister. Um, so that was that. Was that. Uh, so I think that was all of my birthday, birthday knitting and stuff. And um, yeah, so I kind of wanted to talk a little bit more about how my approach to knitting and keeping stash has changed and is changing and what my plans are towards the end of the year. Um, because you know, school started today here and um, it's uh, it's not been a great summer here in like weather wise. It's been OK if today was good. I mean, I had to be inside because I was working all day, but it was like 22 degrees Celsius. It was, you know, pleasant, pleasant enough. Um, but we haven't had any like really really warm days um at all actually so that was a bit of a disappointment i think this summer um obviously we are super lucky that um you know we haven't had any droughts or forest fires there have been some floods in the netherlands but that was really in the south and um it's not something that that we have a lot of here in Harlem, even though, you know, I think we live below sea level. So fingers crossed for that one. Um, so, yeah, obviously, I'd rather not have a happy summer. Well, not have like a really warm summer and have everybody be safe. Obviously, it's not it's not that I want, you know, it's sad what's been happening. Climate change, something that I cannot eloquently discuss, I think, in this podcast. It's also not really what I wanted to talk about. What I wanted to talk about was my stash. Um, 
because I have been slowly, you know, been more of a sort of eco-minimalist person. I, I do mind what I buy. I try not to buy things I don't need. I'm very into my recycling. I was looking into buying a worm hotel. <laughs> Today I haven't decided on what I want just to like, because I live in a tiny apartment and I cannot like compost any of my food waste. Um, but you know, I would like to have some place that I can comp com compost my stuff. Um, Anyway, and then that kind of carries over into how I approach buying things, you know, for my apartment, for myself. I do try and be mindful of resources and, you know, um, how long things will last and stuff like that. And so in my living room, I have three big tubs of yarn. Um, the bottom tub is filled with more rustic yarns, lots of Rauma, stuff like that. Um, and it also has all my mohair. The second tub is completely filled with indie dyed, hand dyed yarn, either my own or from other people. I don't sell any more of yarn anyway, um, by the way, but I still have some from when I did, um, so yeah, that's a second tub. And then the top tub is filled with sock yarn um, and also some of my Christmas yarn. And um, my plan is, because it's three tubs, and my plan is to empty out one of the tubs um, and which is why I've been knitting, you know, sock yarn like a crazy person. I'm not just going to be knitting sock yarn. I'm going to knit from the other tubs as well. You know, I'm going to be knitting mittens and hats and stuff like that as presents. And, you know, maybe a, a nice cardigan for one of my, uh, my nieces. And, you know, there's more babies on the way in our family. So might be knitting some more of some more baby hats probably um but yeah so my plan is to knit away one of the tubs and not needing it anymore and so i i was talking about this with someone over the weekend and they said and i thought that was a really good um comment that as a maker, sometimes the materials that we have, that we have in our possessions, inspire us to make a certain thing that is like fun and creative. <clears throat> Sorry. So I don't want to get rid of my stash completely. I just want to be more of a mindful knitter where I, <clears throat> if I want to make something for myself, you know, really badly, I'll buy the yarn for it and I'll make that thing. And I don't want to be, you know, just buying stuff for the sake of having it and then putting it in a ugly plastic tub because I don't, I'm like afraid of showcasing it because I don't want it to like smell, start smelling bad or I'm afraid of like bugs getting into it because, you know, that's the thing that happens and then half of your yarn gets eaten. And it's something, especially with the indie dyed yarns, they're expensive and they're pretty delicate. And I don't want it to just be eaten away. I want to use it in a way that I feel happy with. So um, yeah, I, I really want to reduce the size of my stash to have it to like a degree where I just feel it's manageable and I'm happy with it, but still have some, like a tiny stash that where I feel comfortable and think, oh, you know, I've seen this project, I have this yarn, but now I'm inspired by something else and there's a thing that I can make 
You know, I, I want my stash to inspire me and make me happy. I don't want to feel dragged down by the sheer size of it. And I know there's like tons of people who have a lot bigger stash, a lot much larger stash, who are super happy and super comfortable with it. And I think that's totally fine. You do you. I just, this is just what I want to do. It's also because my house is not very big. I live in a tiny, tiny apartment in the city centre of Harlem. It's not big. I don't have a McMansion. I don't have an extra room, you know, a craft room or something where I can keep these things. It's literally just tubs that are in my living room taking up space. So um, this is something that I'm doing that works for me, I think. I think this is going to work for me but everybody makes different choices. I'm sure there's people who have very, very small stashes or maybe don't even have a stash. And that's also fine, you know, if it, I think you should have the stash that fits your lifestyle and we shouldn't judge people by the size of their stash. It's, it, yeah. I, I feel like this is something that I want to do for me. So there's that. Um, I'm also being more found I've been more um, financially, what's the word, mindful uh, in the sense that I have like a financial plan for myself. So I try to save up as much as possible and then half of what I save goes into my savings account and the other half of what I save goes into an investment account. And I'm not allowed to touch the investment account at all until I'm old. <laughs> but the idea is that the investment account will start generating some money. And currently it's, the money it's generating is just going back into it. So it's just like compounding interest. Um, and the savings account is just for me to have, to have as a safety net if I ever lose my job or I don't know. A, a thing that Dutch people always say is I have money just in case the washing machine breaks. That seems to be like a thing here. People are always like, you need to save as much because you know, what if your washing machine breaks? This is like a thing that people are really like worried about always. <laughs> I'm just wondering like what kind of crappy washing machines people have had. Um, but I have to say, I once moved house and the place that we moved into, there was something wrong with the connections uh where the washing mach machine would be connected to the water supply and there was something off with it and we had to get a plumber in and it took like a long time to get an appointment and so we were out of using a washing machine for like a week and we had a baby at the time it's really annoying it's you know it's terrible so, I mean, it is a thing. If your washing machine breaks, you want to be able to buy a new one the next day. It's, it's a necessity. Um, but obviously, you know, you want to have a bigger um, thing of sort of safety money. That's how I like it. And this is just like a thing that I, how I was raised, you know, I... I always feel like I should be able to rely on myself and have my own money and you know whatever whatever happens I can make my own choices because I have my safety money so anyway that was really boring sorry for the financial talk welcome to my financial podcast for more financial <laughs> financial missing advice, please like and subscribe this video. I'm not kidding, please like and subscribe because it's the YouTube algorithm hates me <laughs> for some reason. And uh, I, I would like to you know, share my knowledge with more people. Anyway, I think that was it for this week. 
Um, I'm going to be continuing knitting on this sock. I hope you have a lovely week and I hope to speak to you all soon. Happy knitting. Bye.